Hi, I'm Mike LaRosa, a consultant working for the Developer and Platform Evangelism Group for Microsoft Office. In this video, we'll investigate how to use Excel's VLOOKUP function. The name means Vertical Lookup, as this function enables you to dynamically search for related values between rows in the same or different table arrays. So let's switch to Microsoft Excel and get started. This video uses the Sample Students Workbook, which you can download from a link in the companion article. It contains information about the students in a hypothetical state university contained in three worksheets. The first is Students, which contains the records of the currently enrolled students. Of course, this is just a small excerpt of what would be a much larger table for a real school. Note that each student is assigned a pure student called a class buddy. The second worksheet, GPA, contains a quarterly and overall GPA for each student for the current school year. And the third, Grades, contains a GPA to grade conversion table. Towards the bottom, it also contains GPA calculator that is used in the article to demonstrate VBA code that uses VLOOKUP. In this demo, we'll only be using the Students worksheet. We've been tasked with expanding the Students worksheet by adding a column that will hold the email for the class buddy of each student. First, let's make some room by hiding some of the columns which we won't be using in this demonstration. So let's create a new column to hold the class buddy email address. And we'll resize it. We could certainly enter the information in manually. For example, we could take the first class buddy ID search for it in the student ID column and it just so happens it's the next one and then take that person's email address and manually copy it into the class buddy email address column for the first student. Of course this would be very tedious and error prone and if the class buddy changes then you would have to change it two places so your spreadsheet could easily uh, get into a corrupt state. Instead, because these email addresses already exist in column G, we can use the VLOOKUP function in a straightforward manner to search for the proper email address and then dynamically fill this column. Notice that tooltips assist us in supplying the three required and one optional parameter for this function. The first parameter we want is the value to look up, which is the class buddy ID in cell H2 and notice it fills it in for us. The second parameter is the table you want us to search for this value in and the first column must contain the values which we're searching on and it also must include the thing we want to look up which is really column G but will include column H also. The third parameter is the relative column index that contains the resulting value. Here it's column G. Notice that we can't click on it because it gives us a column range. Instead we have to type in the relative index and although we've hidden two columns, this is seven, the seventh column. The fourth optional argument describes the type of search. We'll supply false, indicating that we want an exact match, meaning that the ID that we're looking up has to match exactly one of these values in the first column. Notice that this column has not been sorted. If this last parameter is true or is not supplied, the default is an approximate match. An approximate match requires that this column be sorted. So let's check on a result. We have a class buddy ID 391885. If we find that in the first column of the table we supplied and go across we see the email and that's the email that was dynamically calculated. Next, let's copy this formula to the other cells. We'll just try simply autofilling the remaining cells in this column. And you notice there's quite a few errors. Let's select one. So we can choose to edit it in the formula bar or just simply double click in the cell to edit it. The first thing you notice is that the bounding rectangle exceeds our original specification. And the reason is 
When you autofill, it auto increments the second argument. This obviously isn't what we want, so let's go back and undo the damage. And there's two ways to correct this. The first way is instead of having a relative cell in range, we can make it an absolute one. Now when we autofill, we get the correct values for each cell. However, absolute references are a poor choice for tables that can dynamically grow in size. So once again, let's undo our actions and instead we'll use column ranges to specify the search table. And we can autofill again. And in this way, the next time we add a record to the next empty row, this formula will still work correctly in cell I24. Note that if your table array dynamically changes the order or number of its columns, or has a very complex layout, you may be required to create a user-defined function, or a UDF, to implement vertical lookup correctly. UDFs are written in Visual Basics for application, or simply VBA. For more information about Excel's VLOOKUP function, please consult the companion article to this video. For example, it demonstrates how to use VLOOKUP for calculated results between spreadsheets and in a VBA procedure. Thank you for watching.